Welcome back, everybody, to the Silver Story Author. Today, on a very late edition of Spooky Saturday, I have decided to bring you all my most horrifying story yet from my bookshelf. Today, I'll be reading you the story of the Wax Man. Make sure to stick around after the story for a little bit of an update for the channel. Now, grab your favorite Halloween candy and let's dive in. The Wax Man. Socializing while recovering from trauma is like going through a series of lights while driving. You go through every green light and stop at the red one. We are so worn out from the long journey that we stop and settle. We make our home in intersections full of neon red. We walk away bruised and bleeding because when the lights turn green, we aren't ready to move forward. The fire that we walk away from keeps burning hotter and hotter until it burns away what is left of us. I am so sick of seeing everything melt away. I don't usually mix alcohol to bonfires, but my friends wanted to go out tonight. And honestly, I think sitting in this room of memories is going to melt me into nothing. It will help to get out of the house, my friends keep telling me, even though I doubt anyone who uses help and alcohol in the same paragraph. But I am too tired to give it that much thought. As I was getting ready to leave, I looked in the mirror and saw the chipped glass and the blood reflecting the torment of my mind. I still hear her craze yelling in my ears. The scars from the glass sing sweet sermons straight into my being. I usually didn't wear long sleeve shirts, but I didn't want to garner t unnecessary attention. The only one I had I didn't wear much because it gently held the last piece of my childhood within its fibers. Tonight seemed like a night I could use some material comfort. As I walked out the door to my friend's car, my buddy Randall was leaning against the car, smoking on one of his home road joints. He saw me and immediately commented on the broken window on the second floor. Really walking on glass when she was around, weren't you? He was never really great at reading the room, but luckily our other buddy Jax reached over and smacked him upside the head. Randall let out a loud, OW! And it gave me a chuckle. You should feel bad for that joke, Jax said in an almost parental tone. You guys are like dumb and dumber, I said as I hopped into the back seat. Jax and Randall hopped in the front seats, and we headed to the local bar. Wouldn't we be the Three Stooges? I mean, you are here with us, Randall said as he passed the joint back so I could take a puff. I inhaled deeply and felt my current reality release with the smoke. Riding on the white clouds and lingering in the air, being bounced around by the soft bass and Jax's music. All right, but you are definitely Mo, I said as I passed the joint back. It's because I give you Mo weed in your joints. Both Jax and I rolled our eyes in unison and responded, more like Mo headaches. After a short car ride of banter, we pulled up to the local bar, a little rundown tavern by the name of Fire and Wine. We walked in and I immediately felt something weird that I couldn't quite figure out. A feeling of unease creeped up my spine and seized my eardrums. Yo, Meyer, what's going on? Jax's voice echoed in my ear temporarily freeing me from the feeling of unease. I can't quite explain it, I said shakily before I could speak again. A woman walked over and asked if she could sit next to me. Feel free, I said as I gestured at the seat. She sat down and her perfume danced its way into my nose, echoing a familiar yet comforting smell. The smell of sandalwood. It was the smell that would fill my childhood home whenever my mother lit a candle or incense my only solace in a house full of blood and needles. Before I could find a non-creepy way to ask her about her perfume, she started introducing herself. My name's Lily, by the way. What's yours? She asked cheerfully. My name's Meyer. Nice to meet you. I responded meekly. If you don't mind my asking, is your perfume sandalwood? Lily looked at me, shocked. You have an incredibly keen nose. Funny enough, it's actually not perfume. I was fully prepared to be blasted for being creepy, so her excited response admittedly threw me for a loop. Oh, I slowly responded, not really knowing how else to respond. Yep, I make scented candles for a living, so different smells tend to cling to me even if I change afterwards. 
The smell continued to drift off of her, playing with the weed in my brain and releasing the tension that was wrapped around my spine. Sandalwood candles are my favorite. I would love to learn how to make them if you're ever down to teach me. I said as the beer Jax ordered for me manifested itself in front of me. She was actually ecstatic about me wanting to learn more about her craft. We continued talking for a few hours, cheerfully washing away my depression with good conversation. Before the night came to a close, Randall came over and pulled me aside. His usual calm, cheerful composure was shattered into anxious eyes and lower lip biting. Be wary of her, man, he said shakily while his eyes frantically glanced at her and back to me. When I inquired why, I was incredibly disappointed in his response. There was a rumor about her. It says that she is a reason for all the disappearances recently. A sad thing that had been plaguing our town that I live across the street from her and no man has ever left after going in. My eyes were rolling back into my skull because this all sounded incredibly juvenile. You really are basing this on a rumor? Come on, man. If you and Jax believed every rumor about me, we would have never been friends. Randall conceded that I was right, but still tried to dissuade me from continuing my conversation. There's a reason her eyes are like black holes, he said as a last-ditch effort. Really? Man, how desperate are you? We are in a dark bar. My eyes probably look like black holes right now as well. I angrily whispered as to not alarm Lily of, of this absurdity. Before Randall could respond, Lily walked up behind me and all color drained from his face. I'm about to head out. I live within walking distance if you want to hang and chat more. I explained to her that I wasn't looking for anything more than friends. Still dealing with a lot of scars from my last relationship, I said grasping my right forearm. She shook her hands and explained that she was only looking for friends as well. I just went through a pretty heated breakup myself, so I'm in the same boat. She invited Jax and Randall, but they both declined. I'm going to spend the night with Randall and drive home in the morning, Jax said, slurring his words. Randall was drained of color and simply nodded in agreement. We all went our separate ways for the night, and I walked with Lily back to her house. Upon reaching the doorstep, the house seemed rather peaceful, actually. Beautiful flowers grew along the step. Even in the dead of night, they made her lawn feel vibrant and almost ethereal. Leaves and roots stretched down from hanging planters on the porch, as if they were touching down to greet me. We entered the house, and I was bombarded with a million different smells. Almost all of them were quite pleasant, except there was one that eerily lingered in the background like someone dumped sewage in the back of a flower and perfume shop. I put it in the back of my head for now, but my friend's words made it impossible to fully dismiss. We took off our shoes and set them in the entryway. We walked in, and amongst her extremely bright interior, I got a good look at her face. What I initially thought an exaggeration and poor taste seemed to be very real. Her pupils were completely black. No brown, no green, nothing. Just two giant black dots in the space of white. She noticed my sudden shock and mentioned how it was an extremely rare birth defect. People always thought I was some monster because my skin was really pale and my eyes were void of color. Upon her mentioning it, I now noticed how blinding her skin was. A very strange thing considering how much foliage layered the exterior of her house. When I gave my condolences for experiencing that, she waved her hand dismissively. It's fine. Validation is a dead concept to me anyway. I don't need the approval of others. To the right of the entryway was a small living room with a couch and a love seat, and a fireplace atop which sat eight candles, all burned away to various degrees. Each one had names carved into the drawers that housed them. We sat down on the couch, and I asked her about them. As she stared over at them, her eyes slimmed, and it felt like the air got sucked out of my lungs. It was like the chill I felt at the bar, but more dangerous. It didn't just have my ears and my spine. It felt like a knife was held to my throat. Candles I made with previous relationships and family. None of them are around anymore, she stated with a voice full of disdain. I apologized for asking, and the air lightened up slightly. She offered me some tea, and I accepted only so it would give me time to formulate an excuse to leave. I couldn't pinpoint it, but a feeling was rising up in me. It was akin to what I felt every time my ex tried to kill me. As she walked in the kitchen to get the tea, I cycled through my options. Only then did I come to a horrifying realization. My phone was missing. 
I had it in my pocket when we left, but now it wasn't there. I checked the folds of the couch, and it was not there. I rummaged through my pockets again, but it was missing. Before I could pull my hand fully out of the couch, I heard the clink of cups being set down on a table behind me. Who dropped this? Lily stated while reaching my phone out to me. Her voice sounded more coarse as if she was just on the tail end of a cold. I turned back and saw that she had one hand behind her back. You can just set the phone on the table, I don't need it right now. I was trying my best to play it calm, but I could hear my heart beating in my ears, resounding in my brain, making thinking nigh impossible. I sat up and she smiled from ear to ear, so wide you would guess that she wasn't human. Before I could hear myself think again, she had grabbed my hand, placed my phone in it, and stabbed my hand and the phone together. I rolled off the couch, screaming and writhing in pain. She knelt down in front of me and laughed as I tumbled around, leaking blood from my hand. You should make sure to keep track of your belongings. Now you will never lose it again. Now her eyes were rolled back and she was twitching with a look of utmost pleasure. Ah, oh, the screams of good men always make me so hot inside. And they always make the best candles. She said while letting out a soft moan. I stopped screaming and tried to center my brain, but it was all in vain. Who told you to stop screaming? She said, grabbing my hair and smashing me into the table. The pain was intense and I could feel my nose start to shatter. She pulled my head up to hers and stared into my eyes with a look that was all too used to seeing. Scream, you worthless waste of air. Cry, wiggle in agony. That's all you men are worth after all. I smiled, the blood from my nose running down into my mouth. You can spill my blood and break my bones, but you will never see the day where you take my life. Using the hand with the knife stabbed through it, I backhanded her face, running the tip of the blade through her eyes. She let out a loud, ear-rupturing scream, as blood and bits of eyeball poured from her eyes. She let go of my head and I mustered up the last of my energy and ran for the door. As soon as I put my good hand on the handle, my head lit a blaze. My hair was quickly burned away from the scalp and my flesh was starting to melt off like candle wax. It was mere seconds before my brain was no more. So much for not taking your life, huh? You can't make a good candle without reducing a few souls to nothing. She started laughing, holding a candle with my hair pressed into it. I could feel my life going up in smoke, and I regretted not listening to Randall. As every mistake rolled through my mind, I remembered my childhood. Staring into the flame of a candle, while my mother extinguished her flame with oblivion in a needle. Burn away the nightmares of this world, and drown out the smell of death with your smells. Remembering the wish I made upon that one light, I bashed my head into the wall, lighting the house ablaze. As Lily screamed in the background and the roar, the flames burned away her seemingly beautiful facade. I finally felt at peace. The nightmare is over. I no longer have to fear women or drown in anxiety. For I am a wax man, burn my worries away. I do hope that you all enjoyed Spooky Saturday and this story of the Wax Man. I wanted to make it a bit longer, but I didn't want to uh, take all week to release this video. Um, as usual, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. I do want to do, you know, writing for a living, as I've said many times before, and the only way I can do that is with your guys' support. Um, any support is greatly appreciated. And make sure that you, uh, you know, if you want to help inspire some stories, join the Discord down in the description below. Follow my Instagram, it's also down in the description. And make sure that you keep your eye out for more of these stories moving forward. And I want to apologize for the long delay on this one. Um, I kind of, uh, I tend to give myself deadlines and miss them uh, when it comes to writing because I want to pour more time into things. So... If there is ever a, uh, a day I am late, I will try to release it on the following Monday. So that is going to give rise to this new tradition, which I'm calling Manic Mondays, because sometimes you get manic and you just can't write the story completely. And I hope that um, you'll continue to give me your support in the next one and many more after that. 
Um, I hope you all have an amazing Halloween, and hopefully, if we end up getting a few more people in the Discord, I actually want to start doing um, Discord streams every Saturday, along with the Spooky Saturdays. I'm going to be doing... I'm going to be uh, playing horror movies and whatnot in the Discord, and once we actually get a few people, I can start doing that. Um, we're going to do the... Every weekend on Saturday and Sunday, we're going to do two different things, so this following Saturday, we're going to end up doing the Candyman movie, the original 1992 version, uh, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And the following Sunday, we're going to start doing a horror series. Um, I'm going to be doing a rewatch of Monster, which is my tied with Gintama for my first favorite anime of all time and hopefully we can all enjoy that together as we celebrate Halloween. And um, just a heads up, because I, I don't think I have anyone underage currently listening, but just in case, the Discord is going to be only 18+, plus because I do not want to put myself and other people at risk, and I want us to be able to talk openly. So I apologize if you are not 18, but I will not have anyone under 18 in my Discord. So, um, I hope you all have an amazing week and i will not be doing a therapeutic thursday so uh you know don't be looking out for that but we will be doing the spooky saturday uploads and i'm gonna try to get back on the stoner sundays because we all still need a little laugh here and there um so i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one and thank you for your support and until next time bye bye <laughs>